I think you have to look at the violence um, in the context in which they're taking it's taking place. And we did always expect ahead of the elections uh, to be uh, an upsurge in violence. Um, but also it has to be seen against the backdrop of the historic ceasefire that we had during the last Eid um, and the forthcoming um, Eid, which, which happens next week. Uh, and I think it just clearly demonstrates that um, the Taliban, even though there have been some um, kind of tentative steps towards talking about uh, a peace process and obviously the meeting between the Taliban and the US in Qatar. Um, but they very much taken on uh, the previous kind of NATO US position, which was fight and talk. Um, and clearly the Taliban is not ready uh, to relinquish its on the ground military presence at the moment. And of course, of course, the Afghan uh, forces there are currently being supported by U.S. Uh, troops. The British Prime Minister just announced that she's going to send another 440 soldiers to Afghanistan. Uh, we're now nearly four years since uh, the U.K. pulled out of Afghanistan. Is that an admission? Is this an admission that that was premature? I mean... You know, I think that the troop increases and, and drawdowns um, are not necessarily definitive about the, the pattern of the war itself. You know, we look back to 2010 when we had the troop surge um, and we had, you know, over 100,000 troops in Afghanistan and, and still they, they couldn't actually bring an end to this war. Um, but I think... You know, part of President Trump's strategy back in 2017 was to say that we would no longer have a troop deadline, which, of course, had been announced under the Obama administration with, with the drawdown. So, you know, potentially ensuring that we can demonstrate ongoing support to the Afghan government, uh, which is desperately needed, uh, is, is part of the strategy of, of sending troops back.